Okay, everyone, welcome back. And we are now in part three of using Blackboard Collaborate. So we have reviewed how to uh, start a recording. Remember that's in this upper left-hand corner and start recording. We've reviewed how to do your status and settings by clicking on that, turning your microphone on and off, turning your video on and off, sharing your video, that's me, very big, we'll turn that off. <laughs> uh, and then of course using the raise hand tool and when to use it. We've talked about the chat room, that you can chat with everyone, you can chat with individuals by searching for them or with other moderators. We've shown how to type into the chat room and we've reviewed the roster tool. Of course, how to manage all of the attendees at once and then you use this control over here to manage attendees individually. These little bars right here, just so you know, this tells you when um, a student is having connectivity problems. So when it says your experience is excellent, it means that their connection in the Blackboard room is very good. Uh, sometimes this will drop down to two bars, which means it's just okay. And if there's one red bar, it means that they have a very poor connection and they're probably going to get lost out of the room. Uh, they'll lose the internet connection, it won't be strong enough. So that's one way to ensure that your students have um, a good experience is to make sure that everybody has uh, full bars here. Not that you can really do much about it, but it just kind of gives you an idea if you see that a lot of people are having internet problems. Uh, that's something to think about in your class. So next I wanted to go over with you the share content tools. In the share content tools, here we can uh, share lots of different things with our students. So the first is, of course, the whiteboard. All you do is click here on whiteboard and the whiteboard will show up. Over on the top left-hand corner by, by the um, recording button that you selected are your drawing tools that are available to you for the whiteboard. The first one is a select tool. We'll show you how that works in a minute. We have just a pointer, so if you want to just use your pointer uh, to point to different things on the whiteboard, you can do that. You can um, use, of course, the pencil. With the pencil, you can draw freehand, so I can put my name there. Um, when you use the pencil, you have nine different colors to choose from. Of course, the white is going to work like an eraser, so you really have eight. Um, but you can select any of these colors by just clicking on the color. And you can change the color that you're writing in. If you want to highlight something in a, in a picture or something that you drew or wrote, you can do this with a shape. You can draw, of course, a rectangle. You can draw a circle. Or most often used, the straight line. So I can say, oh, look, there's the letter P and there's the letter L. If you are having trouble because you are using a mouse, that can, drawing on the board can be a little difficult. So if you want to type text, you just use a text box and then you can type text directly in the box. You can say, okay, well, um, I wanna move this line here so that that uh, points to something. This is where you would use your selection tool. So you come back over to the arrow and click on the arrow, use the select tool, and now I can point to the type in the box and I can move my arrow, my straight line, wherever you want. Uh, you can't change the, you can change the size of it, but you can't uh, rotate it or change uh, the orientation of it. So if it's not in the right orientation, you can simply, um, <coughs> excuse me, you can simply delete it and um, draw a new line. Now, if you want to delete just the line and not the entire page, you would go back to your pencil tool and you just color over it in white. So I'm just gonna come over here and color over this arrow in white and now it's gone for the most part. So it's gone. If I want to clear the entire board at once, I just click the eraser tool and that will clear the entire whiteboard. After sharing a whiteboard, the next tool that is available to you is the share application and screen. If you click on this button, 
you in Chrome are going to get this box right here. Uh, you definitely want to use Chrome with Blackboard Collaborate. It's the only one that gives you all three of these sharing options and it really works the best with Blackboard. So you can share your entire screen. To do that, click on your entire screen. If you have two screens, um, you work with two separate screens, you'll have two screens listed up here um, and you can click on the other screen if you want to use that one. And then you just simply click share. Takes a moment to render and now it shares. Now when you are sharing in Blackboard um, and you share your Blackboard shell, you're going to see this big long cascading kind of funny looking tunnel. That's perfectly okay. It's perfectly normal. It is because you are sharing Blackboard within Blackboard. So it's the same as pointing two mirrors towards each other. Um, when you are sharing your screen, you're probably doing it because you want to show them something that is outside of Blackboard. So the better option for this, instead of sharing your entire screen, um, we're going to stop sharing. You hit that little circle with the square that stops the sharing. And you're better off just sharing the application itself. So let's just say that you have a Word document that has um, some information on it that you want to share with your students. You, you can't upload a Word document into Blackboard. It only accepts PowerPoint, pictures, or PDF files. Now you could convert your Word document into a PDF file and then upload that directly into Blackboard. That is an option particularly if you want to be able to draw on it when you are talking about it. But if you just want to present it really quick or it's something maybe you think of while you're lecturing and you didn't have a chance to prepare it, just have the document open and select application window. In an application window, it will pop up whatever application you have open on your desktop. I don't have any right now, but I can go back and open a few and then it'll show the different applications and you can just um, open the application. Last but not least, uh, here, this one is um, Chrome. I have Chrome open right now, so I'm just going to share Chrome with you and that's what we're looking at. But because I'm sharing what we're already looking at, it's going to give you that cascade event again. So why don't I, while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and I'm going to open, uh, let's say a PowerPoint. Or here I have something down here. I have the micro lab schedule that I was working on. So I'm going to open that. It's in a numbers file, which is a max version of, um, of Word. So now I'm going to go to share application and screen. It is not uh, in select application. For some reason, my numbers file is not showing up. Ah, there we go. So once I go into, I guess you can't do that in full screen on my computer. So once you are in the application window, I'm going to cancel and start that over for you again go to share application screen click on that instead of sharing your entire screen we're now going to share an application window when you open up the application window these are the different applications that are open on my computer so if i want to share say the micro lab schedule i can click on the micro lab schedule click share and now that um, document will show up directly in uh, it shows up directly in in Blackboard. If I want to do anything with this schedule, if I make any changes to it while we are um, uh, sharing it, those changes will show up in the share. Last but not least, if you want to share, say, a video or something else, let's say that you... Um, uh, had a video in your PowerPoint <clears throat> from YouTube and that video, it when you have it in the PowerPoint in Blackboard, it won't work. So you want to share a tab. In this case, you will have something already open in Chrome. And when you click on Chrome tab, it will give you a list of the different tabs that you already have open. If you want to share just a website, you can click on that tab and select share and it will then show up for you what is, um, go back to the room. And so now in the room, you see um, 
my tab for one login. If you want to share a video, there is a trick to it. So open up your share screen, go to Chrome tab, select um, uh, share audio and video. So uh, this is, I was uploading another file for you guys. So I'm going to go to the YouTube studio. I want to make sure that I share audio. Otherwise, when you go to the other tab, they're going to be able to see your video, but they won't be able to hear it. So I can share and this brings me here and I can Yeah. So that's the uh, YouTube video. So as long as you have that share audio button checked off, they'll be able to hear the video. Um, otherwise, they'll see it, but they won't be able to hear it. I'm going to turn this off. And the next tool is the share files tool. In share files, you are going to upload your document directly into, um, you can upload it directly into Blackboard Collaborate. I'm going to uh, just kind of add, let's say this file here. Oh, I can't do it from here. My apologies. Do it from Finder. Um, I want to add a, this is, um, this is a picture. So as long as it turns green, it will add my picture. I can add a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I can add a PowerPoint somewhere in here. I have a PowerPoint. Uh, here we go. So now I can add a PowerPoint. That's a very large PowerPoint, so it's going to take a long time to load up. While I'm waiting for that, I can select whatever it is that I want to share. So if I want to share, say, um, this particular PowerPoint here, I hit share now, and I now can, uh, using Blackboard Collaborate, share this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so this is a PowerPoint I've been working on to provide you as well. It's not done yet, or I would have given it to you. Um, but you just click on the slide and that will uh, put you into the different places you need to go uh, in, the, in the presentation. You can use the navigation tool at the bottom, which is a little smoother and moves you through, oh, I've selected that, moves you through each of the slides. If you wanna share something else, so say now I wanna share this picture and I add a picture and I have this pretty mountain scene. I'm teaching environmental science and I can say, where are the turtles going to live? Uh, what's really nice about the share file tool is that you have your draw tool still up at the top. So you can draw on your PowerPoint or whatever file you are sharing. The nice thing about this is that your students can also draw on it. So I could say, um, hey, Nicole, would you please put in a red X where uh, turtles are going to live in this environment? And so she may put a couple of little red X's around the water there. And I may say, okay, Edelisa, could you put a blue X where the fish are going to live? And you would put some blue X's in the water. And I could say, Vanessa, could you put a yellow X where deer are going to live? And she would put yellow X's on there. So this allows you to get your students to interact as opposed to them just kind of sitting here watching you like a YouTube movie. Um, and they can start interacting with the lecture themselves by marking on your PowerPoint. If you have, uh, let's say, uh, like for anatomy, you could put up a skeleton and have them label the bones. You can also do this with the group tool. So um, I'll show you how to use the group tool in a moment. <clears throat> but you can um, upload pictures. That's kind of the best part. And you can have them the students actually write on the pictures as well and mark things. Uh, if they don't have a pen type of thing and they're using a mouse, you might wanna say, show them how to use the shape tool and tell them select a shape and just circle whatever it is I tell you to circle, right? So you just tell them, oh, just make a circle around that or a square, something like that. The next tool is the polling tool in the polling tool, 
<coughs> excuse me, in the polling tool, you can ask a multiple choice or a yes or no question, which would be the same as a true or false. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you can only write one question at a time. So a suggestion I make is um, instead of interrupting your lecture and typing in a question, prepare your PowerPoint ahead of time. So whatever document you're going to use to upload into um, D2L, whether it's a PDF or, um, or the PowerPoint itself, whichever way you decide to do it is fine. Just prepare it ahead of time if there are specific questions that you want to ask your students. Type those questions into the PowerPoint. And then in the poll, just simply say, uh, read the question on the slide. Uh, I, my typing is terrible, but you know what I mean. I would say uh, select your answer below. Then you can type in your choices. And what I would do is here, I would just put an A, a B, C, and D, if I was doing a multiple choice question, and then start. So when I get to a point in my lecture that I would normally stop in class and ask my students a question, in, uh, like a review, or just kind of guide them through something, or maybe even a predictive question that you're going to ask them. So who here has ever heard of this? Or who here has ever had an experience with this? And um, you can put that question in your PowerPoint as a slide. When you get to that slide, you can just simply start the poll. You can have the poll already typed up and ready and you can just start the poll. Students will uh, give their answers. You'll see the number of students or attendees in the very top box. The next box will um, be your choices and you'll see students selecting those choices. It will not tell you who selected what, so you, it's not quite like a clicker uh, where you can uh, grade it, but it's just, it's just a poll, so it's totally anonymous. You might want to say, okay, you have 30 seconds to answer this question, however much time you want to give them, and then you lock the poll. When you lock the poll, it shows everybody how many, answer select, how many students selected each answer. You can then take a look at the slide and maybe talk to the students who got the answers wrong or it kind of gives you an idea. Um, you can kind of gauge where your students are in your lecture. When you're done with the poll, just give it, click the X and it's gonna save the poll down here at the bottom of your screen. So then you continue lecturing. When you get to the next question slide, you simply open the poll, hit clear, and that restarts a new poll. And this way you don't have to make the students wait for you to type in a question and all of the answer choices. The questions are already prepared in your, um, in your PowerPoint slide. And all you're doing is using the same poll question over and over again to allow the students to answer those questions. Uh, you can do this with a multiple choice and you can do this, of course, with the true or false. After the polling tool is the groups tool. This is the very last one. In the groups, you open that up. We did that a little bit uh, when we did the training earlier today. Um, you can provide a custom assignment. Uh, you can allow students to switch groups. I have not gotten this custom assignment to work yet, so I'm not sure exactly what it does. Um, and once I get it to work, I'll make you guys a video and um, explain it to you. You can um, drag people. When you first open the groups, it will automatically assign people into groups, but you can change it. So if you want to change who's in what group, you could do that. You can add groups. So if you, depending on how many students you have, maybe you have um, 12 students and you only want three in a group. So you just make uh, these groups and drag some from the prior ones down here to even it out. So all you do is just grab the tag and move them into a new group. Students can um, move around in their own groups. If they want to switch around and be with their friends or something like that, you can click this to allow them to switch groups or you can turn it off and they're simply in the group they were assigned. Once you hit the start button, you're going to break them out into groups. I am in group three because I was put into group three. Uh, and 
I, if I am in group three with other people, the only people that can hear me speak are other people that are in group three. None of the other groups can hear me. Um, also, if I chat, I go into the chat, I'm in the group three chat. I'm not in the every room chat. So um, only the people in my group are going to be able to see me chat. If I go back, I can of course change that to everyone. When I go back to my group tool, um, I can update and I can, here I'm in group three. So in the interaction, I'm in group three. And I can, of course, here is where I can end the breakout groups. This is great for, um, uh, you can do group activities, active learning. Uh, an example would be, I was doing a review a few weeks ago and we were talking about some antibiotics and I had a bunch of students in the room and I thought, okay, let's do a breakout. And I assigned them into groups. I just simply did it by um, selecting the breakout groups. And I told each group beforehand, I said, listen, well, I'm gonna break you out into groups and you have 10 minutes to go online, research an antibiotic that is effective against this bacteria. Tell me if it's um, a broad spectrum or a narrow spectrum, uh, how it works, how its mechanism of action, what it does, and then um, uh, pull all of that information together in your group chat. And then one of you is gonna have to present it. So they had to go out and, and do this sort of um, group project for a few minutes and then come back. And they were just go you know Googling. I said, just go on the internet and Google. Didn't have to be anything um, graded. It was just a way to get them to interact with each other, break up a lecture, uh, make it a little more engaging, a little more interesting, and get them interacting. And so students really kind of like the interaction uh, in, in the breakout groups. <clears throat> the last tool over here is the settings tool. This is just allows you to change your speaker volume. Maybe the students say, hey, you're blowing out my ears. So you can turn down the speaker volume of your voice. You can reset up your camera and microphone. You can change the notification settings. So um, someone leaves um, or joins a breakout group or session, you can tell it to give you a pop-up. <clears throat> you can tell it to give you an audio so it beeps. You can, uh, someone posts a chat message, it'll beep or and pop up a, a post. You can have closed captioning enabled. You, in order to use closed captioning, you have to make someone a captioner. Uh, accessibility resources will let you know that someone has requested closed caption for your lecture and they will assign someone to be the captioner. They will enter into your room and then you will have to, um, you will have to make them the captioner. If someone raises their hand, uh, when the student uses the hand raising tool, you want to be notified of that. So uh, you don't need a browser pop up, but it'll pop up a little, um, a little white uh, text box just about up here. You'll see kind of this little text box. It'll have the person's name. And if they typed something in the chat, it will have their message. Or if they simply raised their hand, it'll just say raised hand. And of course, if you're having a problem with your session, you can report an issue directly to Blackboard. So these settings over here are kind of nice because you can change your notifications. Um, every, those little pop-up windows, sometimes if you're really into a lecture, they can be a little distracting. Uh, so you may want to turn that off <clears throat> if it's a really intense lecture and just tell the students, hey, um, I'll answer your questions in a few minutes. So those are all of the different tools that are available in Blackboard. I hope I covered everything. If you have any questions, anything at all, please remember that you can uh, text me. I'll put my phone number in here one more time. Feel free to send me a text and I will answer your question as best I can. And like I said before, if you need me to jump onto a Zoom meeting or into a Blackboard with you, um, let me know and I'm more than happy to uh, join you in a Blackboard room. Maybe if you just want to practice to learn how to use some of the tools such as polling and that sort of thing. Of course, call each other and practice with each other. The best way to get good at Blackboard is to keep using it. Um, and I think that once you've used this tool several times, you're going to find that it's really, um, 
It's really helpful. I use it in my lectures for reviews, exam reviews and such with students. Um, and also online office hours, it works great for that because you can share exam materials, like if somebody wants to review an online exam or you can scan their exam and share it with them. Um, it's really convenient for students to be able to ac have access to you um, in an online environment. Maybe they can't come to campus during your office hours. So tell them if you're home, Let's do a collaborate. I can meet you on Blackboard uh, during office hours and I can, I can help you out so they can speak with you. Again, any questions, uh, again, text me or email me. I'm more than happy to help. I hope everybody has lots of success moving their courses over and um, I think we can all get through this. Have a great night.